Tu ana te kahui manga te puto te ka maui tiki tiki a taranga. Taka waira te matapuna me na kore ro me na waka papa. E re re kaua na na tika nga o kutu puna. I ro na ripo ripo na na re o te awa wanga nui. Tai atu koutou ki te puna wai, ki te puna ora, ki te puna aroha o tango roa. Ti hei mauri ora. O tēnā kui hāmi, gosh. Thank you for um, your welcome. Um, tēnā koutou katoa nga rauranga tēra mā. Ko tai mai i tēnei rā. Uh, ki te waka witi witi kōrero i runga i tēnei kaupapa. Ai, um, tēnei te mahi atu ki a koutou. So yes, as people would say, eight months ago I crossed over to the other side. I um, left uh, 25 years of working for my tribe under the leadership of people like um, Auntie Tari, like um, Sir Archie, the late Sir Archie, and um, many other uh, of our leaders at home. Uh, and took the brave step to actually see what it took to make this happen and be reinforced within government. So uh, my role uh, is Chief Advisor in Te Puni Kōkiri. I work in the office of the CEO, Michelle, who spoke yesterday, and one of my kaupapa that I'm responsible for overseeing is Wana Wura. So I'm going to talk to you uh, uh, today about some of the mahi that we're doing in Te Puni Kōkiri. And Moana talked about it yesterday. To give true effect to policy, you have to actually understand it. You actually have to believe it. And so whilst Te Puni Kōkiri has been supporting the government's rollout of Wana Water since 2010, they actually haven't really understood it or believed in it. Or they believed in it, but to understand it and to give life to it is another thing. So one of my roles is to help us as an organisation give life to it within ourselves, within Te Puni Kōkiri. So I'm going to share that with you today. I thought, though, because the theme of the conference talks about measurement, that I would just take us back to what the task force report said about measurement. The commentary in the task force report on Wano Centred um, initiatives talks about the fact that balancing the development of Wano order would rely on balancing the need for provider accountability with the need for flexibility and responsiveness in service delivery. And you have to think that this was in the time where the first phase was about service delivery. It's evolved since then. But I think the principle of balancing the needs for accountability and responsiveness are the two key principles that you can take out of that that will be relevant as we move on in this one I would journey. It talked about collecting outcome focused rather than output focused information. Unfortunately, in cycles of government, they want to see quick runs and usually click quick runs relate to outputs. So it's a real challenge for us to not rush off and try and look for the measurable output to serve their needs. It's really important that we still remain focused on the outcomes. Talks about collecting information or continuous timely data. And when you're working on the ground with our wano, the most important thing that you can do is get a good baseline. Get what's your starting point, particularly when you're measuring outcomes, because you have to be able to show change. If you don't create a good baseline, then measuring change over time is really difficult. We haven't necessarily focused on building capability amongst our workforce to capture good baseline. We have some of our best kaimahi back at home they were awesome out in the field. They weren't necessarily awesome at coming over and writing that up. So those are some of our challenges, especially when we are required to evidence stuff. We have to be able to do things, not just in the field, but have to evidence that. So whoever comes in, they can see what the mahi has been. And ultimately, th those 
things should reside with the Wano. How they capture that stuff for themselves resides with them. And it talked about according value both to qualitative and quantitative information. And most of you who uh, participate in this field of research, you'll understand those two forms. But when the pressure's on, people will ask you for what's the quantitative data? <laughs> Just looking at my research buddy here. So what can you count? And what can you count really fast? I thought I'd talk to you about the system. For those of you who don't know what um, the current operating system of the Wano Water approach is. So Richard just spoke to you about the Wano Water outcomes. Those are derived from the work from the task force, but they were also added a seventh element to that, really comes from the work that Mason did in Pai Order. So any of you have looked at the refresh for Kurawai Oranga, you will see Pai Ora added an element around the environment, living and natural environments. Anyway, so Richard talked about the partnership groups setting strategic direction. These are all the government um, ministries that contribute uh, to the partnership group. They don't necessarily contribute their dollars to Wana Ora at the moment. Those that do, so Te Pini Kōkiri uh, are responsible for the commissioning approach. The Ministry of Social Development has had a little, um, little go at contributing over the last couple of years, but in the main, the others have a lot of ability to influence change, and hopefully over time, they'll see the trust. We've so talked about that over the last day or so. And, and confidence to invest or do things differently. It doesn't even mean that you have to invest, but actually change the way that you do things to enable freedom at the other end for people doing the mahi. So those um, three commissioning agencies, and you would have heard Helen last night, she works for Te Putaitanga. You're going to hear from some of them today. Te Pau Matakana, in the North Island and Pacifica Futures. And they invest based on their models. So as you would have heard from Helen, I couldn't make it last night, we had a partnership group meeting, um, but I'm sure she would have told you about their approach is from the ground up. So understanding what the one I want to do, what their needs are, and investing in those. Commissioning occurs across those three agencies based on their investment models, so it's not all the same. So achieving um, single sets of data across that population is difficult, because it's diverse. And that's what Wana Water is about. It's not meant to be one way for everybody. It's meant to be based on what works for them. So I thought I would just share for you the system. That's how the system works and currently channels the policy out. But I'm going to really focus in on what we're doing within Te Puni Kōkiri to give you an insight of actually the framework, the outcomes, the one order goals have potential to guide you in other ways. And this is what we're doing within Te Puni Kōkiri. Our aim is to build an understanding of wana order across Te Puni Kōkiri that supports the development of a wano centred approach. It starts with kōo. What do I do? What do I know? What do I practice? How do I give life to it? Then komato, what do we do? Kotato, what do we all do? So koa, my slide's looking a bit um, crunched up there, but anyway, just I'm sure you'll get the gist of it. Koa, building an individual's understanding of the one order approach. What do I need to, to know as an individual and what, what can I do? Supporting kaimahi in their own right. So first of all, it's been about holding workshops with kaimahi to go through what wana ora uh, sought to achieve, the aspirations of the wana ora goals. It goes back to some of the discussion where it says 
you know, and even Auntie talked about it this morning. It's not something you just invest in. It's not a program that you just roll out. And for Timpini Kōkere, we've kind of been a little bit divorced from that. So we're committed to building that understanding with our, with our kaimahi and as an organisation. And then Komato, once we've built an individual appreciation of those goals and what that means in our life, Komato, how do we give effect to that as to Pinikokere? Do we act as one people, as one wano? How do we inform what we do? How do we go out and ensure that our mahi is what is still relevant to the wano that we are trying to support? And then Kotato, once we've built up that appreciation, once we have developed within ourselves how we want to give life to this within our organisation, then how do we go out and champion this? And it's a little bit about what Amo here said. The Auditor General goes out and asks you, and what do you say? We're not having the same messaging because we haven't built up that same appreciation. So we hope, once we've done this mahi within us, said to Pinikokere, that when someone comes and asks us what does it mean, that we're be able to confidently say, this is what it means. This is what, how we're giving effect to it in our mahi. And then uh, strengthening our relationships with iwi across government and the broader private public sector. So these are the one order outcomes that um, Richard talked about and that frame the work since the task force report. Self-managing, healthy lifestyles, oh, that's a bit crooked, but. <laughs> healthy lifestyles, confidently participating in society, confidently participating in language and culture, economically secure and wealth creating, Cohesive, <laughs> resilient, and nurturing. I've had 10 years of this, I should know that off by heart. And connected to our living and natural environments. And when we look at some of these things, living healthy isn't just about being healthy physically. Well, it is, like ultimately, want to be living optimum health and, wealth and, health and well-being. But also it's about healthy relationships. How do we get on with each other? And so just to tease this out a little bit more, and we're still developing it, but if we were thinking about self-managing within Tupuni Kōkere, does the way that we invest and work with Wano Hapu and Iwi encourage self-management, Wano leadership and independence? In terms of healthy lifestyles, do we support our kaimahi to live healthy lifestyles or encourage healthy working relationships within our organisation? Confidently participating in society, how is the work of Te Pini Kōkere leading and influencing public policy in relation to Wano wellbeing? Economically secure and wealth creation. How are kaimahi being support? Oh no, sorry, skip that, go back one. <laughs> um, confidently participating in language and culture, and the task force report reflects on te reo Māori, me ona tikanga, and that's because the purpose and the, um, that particular focus of that report was about improving the aspirations of te iwi Māori. And when government adopted this as a policy, they said it's for all people. So it's about supporting people in their culture and their language, whoever you are engaging with, whoever you are working with. So internally, how do we support our kaimahi within Te Puni Kōkere to grow their language and cultural cap capability, competency? 
economically secure and wealth creating? How does the Pinikokiri use its appropriations in effective way? Oh, is the Pinikokiri using its appropriations in an effective way, leveraging off relationships to increase investment? So when we get to the Komato Mahi, we're thinking about how, do the, how does the work that we do, how can we affect and support change in a one order way? And this is much different to how we used to practice. Traditionally, you just roll out the things that you're responsible as a Crown entity. Well, I'm learning that, like, this is eight months, so that's not a pro talking, but, you know, generally you have a policy program, you have a budget, and your job is to roll that out. Here we're trying to be more proactive and make sure that what we are investing in, not just in commissioning, but all of the other things that we are investing in as an organisation, even the policy advice that we provide, that it's framed to connect back to this. Are we cohesive, resilient, and nurturing? So are we operating as one team, supporting each other to improve outcomes for Wano? And even as individuals, you know, each and every one of us work really hard. We do, you know, extra amounts of work and we're really tiresome, some of our roles. So how do we make sure that we're supporting each other? You know, so one order is about taking care of yourselves and being able to take care of other people. So, support, uh, the living and natural environment supporting Wano to establish their living environments on their lands. And some of the mahi that Te Puni Kokiri is doing at the moment in terms of the Winawa Fund, uh, the housing network, is contributing to this kaupapa. So it's really giving you an insight of some of the commitment that Te Puni Kokiri has made to actually build up an appreciation across our organisation. That's one of my jobs, is to go around our organisation, have conversations really about the intention and what one I would have set, uh, set about doing. So to date, what we've been up to, we've initiated um, monthly kaupapa kōrero led by the chief executive. So we get together and Michelle will give a kōrero about some of the mahi we've been doing. Other people will contribute to that as we go along. So we're working as one organisation. Quarterly, we have senior leadership team hui for tier three managers up. And that's to help build our individual understanding, but also to help commence Komato. What are we doing collectively to build our um, strengths within our organisation to support each other, to be in the same walker, heading in the same direction, ultimately supporting one order. We're building more opportunities for one input into what we do. We recently did the MLS engagement for the Māori Land Service. We went out to the Rohe about three times to engage directly with them to get their vision about if we were developing a Māori Land Service up, what could it do for them? So being Wano centred is making sure that we're out there getting that appreciation of what our Wano want to see done. We did Wano surveys at Te Matatini that told us a whole lot of things about what their aspirations were for kainga, for whenua, for their wano. And we're utilising our promotion opportunities to reinforce wana water in action. So at Matatini, our t-shirt said, living healthy lifestyles. So taking one of the wana water goals and making it relevant to that moment. So it was hashtag hakafit. So, you know, I can't remember who talked about some of those nice, strong, haka-looking bodies at Matatini. 
This is about recognising the role that kapahaka can play in our well-being, in our wairua, hinenaro and tinana. So my time's up on the screen, and I just wanted to give you a different insight of how the framework of wana water can apply to you in your daily lives. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.